Well, that uh, that worked pretty good with the communion, don't you think? Yeah, yeah. I like the uh, idea of the cup. Great minds run the same way. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Well, I'm sore glad to be here today, and glad you all made it here today, because we've been missing you for the last what, five, six, seven, eight weeks. I don't know. Ten. Ten? Has it been ten, ten weeks? Oh my goodness. Today will be ten. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Is it right? Mm-hmm. My hair is okay. <laughs> Yeah, that's about nothing to me. Is my neck pretty? Scripture reading today is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 17, verses 6 through 19. John 17, 6 through 19. John 17, beginning at the sixth verse. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. And all thine, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee, Holy Father. Keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name, Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now come I to speak, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the word hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so, have I also sent them into the world. For their, and for their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Thus endeth the reading of God's holy word. May he bless his truth unto our hearts, and let us pray. Father God, we come to you at this time of peril and and distress in this country, not only in this country, but in the whole world. Father, this is the first time that that most or all of us have lived through a pandemic, and we pray, our Father, that we will live through it. We pray, our Father, that you will keep our members safe and secure, keep them from this evil virus, that is so violent with people and has taken so many lives around the world. And Father, help us. Help our medical people to find a cure, a prevention and a cure for this disease. 
Father, as, as we face this daily in our lives, we just remember that you are in charge of this universe. That you, your word will be spread. That your truths will go around the world. Father, we thank you for each one that has braved this virus to come out today to worship thee. We thank you for that. We thank you, our Father, for those that have been watching the sermons that Dawn and I have put on the internet. And we pray that the, we will continue to be able to do that for our Sundays. And Father, we just ask your blessing upon each one here today. Lift each one of us up. Help us to be strong. Help, help us to speak up for you. Even when the world is so nasty, when the world is so violent against you, help us, our Father, to stand up for you, to let everyone know that you are our Father, that you are in charge of this nation and this universe. Father, we thank you for that. Father, we ask you to be with those of our number that have various problems. Uh, we pray for Wayne and we just pray, our Father, that you will bless him, lift him up. We pray for Mark who just went through surgery and we just pray for healing and pray that everything will be okay and bless him. And each of the ones, our Father, that I may not know, but you know and you can. We pray for Bill and and he's back and we just pray our Father that you will take away the pain and that he might be able to come fellowship with us. Father, as, as this world turns and, and things seem crazier and crazier, we remember, we remember that you and you alone are in charge. Thank you, Father, for being that. We ask thy blessing upon each one. We pray for those that would like to be been here and not able, whatever the reason, be with them, our Father. And help us as we go through our daily lives to look to thee for our strength and our guidance. In Christ's holy name I pray. Amen. In Acts 5, Scene 5 of Shakespeare's Macbeth. The character Macbeth has heard that the queen is dead, and he knows his own death is imminent. At this time, he delivers the famous soliloquy. And I quote, Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow creeps in this petty pace from day to day. Till the last syllable, of recorded time, and all our yesterdays have lighted fools. The way to dusty death, out, out, brief candle. Life's but a walking shadow, a poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage, and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Is Macbeth right? Is life nothing but a shadow having no substance, no meaning? Writers and philosophers since recorded time have tried to answer that question. I don't think any of them have been successful in answering the question to everyone's satisfaction. Someone once said that trying to speak about the ultimate reality is like sending a kiss with a messenger. I understand their point. Something of its truth is lost in translation. What? is the meaning of life. A philosophical question to be sure, 
But this is not only the philosopher's question. It is a genuinely human question, and therefore a question that we all ask. It might be a question that is asked in despair or hope, out of cynicism or out of sincere curiosity, and a deep desire to have goals and guidance in life. However we raise the question about the meaning of life, it is our most basic and fundamental question. And so it comes as no surprise that Jesus deals with this question and answers it. Surprisingly, the answer is not given in the context of an argument with the Jewish leaders or in a discussion with his disciples. It is not given in the Sermon on the Mount where Jesus deals with so many fundamental issues. It is telling that Jesus deals with the meaning of life in the context of prayer. In the context of what has been called by many scholars Jesus' high priestly prayer. The disciples are now in the upper room. They have just finished the Passover meal, and Jesus is thinking about his crucifixion, which will occur within the next 24 hours. He knows that he's about to leave his disciples alone in this world, and he goes before God as a priest would, to intercede for them, to pray for them. Listen again to his prayer. I'm lifting out a few key verses. When I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe, but I will remain in the world no longer. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. Father, the time has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people, that he might give eternal life. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. It is in this third verse that Jesus delivers the meaning of eternal life, and in essence, the meaning of life itself. He says, and I quote, Now this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. In essence, Jesus says, the meaning of life is this, that you have a relationship with God and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And that's the long and the short of it. But Jesus himself understood just how difficult it was going to be not only for his disciples, but for all of us who come to this very simple realization in life. And so he prays for two key things. First, he prays in order that we might understand the meaning of life. We do need protection from the world because the world can steal life from us. Patsy Claremont authored the book entitled God Uses Crack Pots. Tells a story about her youngest son, Jason. Little Jason has only two goals in life. 
One is to have fun, and the other is to rest. And he does both quite well. So it was no surprise when he was sent out to catch the bus one fall day. And there was, just after a few moments, a knock at the door. And his mother went and opened the door, and there stood little Jason looking up with his backpack and his lunchbox dragging the ground. And his mother said, what in the world are you doing? He bravely said, I've quit school. Mom said, you quit school? And she looked at her child in disbelief. She tried to think of some motherly wisdom but all that came to mind at that time was a stitch in time saves nine, or feed a cold and starve a fever, or something like that. And the, neither one of them uh, seemed to fit the situation. So she said, why have you quit school? And without hesitation, Jason said, it's too long, it's too hard, and it's too boring. This time, his mother was equal to the task. She shot back to him, you have just described life. Now you get out there and get on that school bus. The day in and day out, tediousness and challenges of life can be overwhelming. Sometimes life can be just too long, too hard, too boring, and we can lose our Christian hope, our joy, and succumb to despair. It's then that we try to find meaning in life, in other things than through God. We look to escape through a ball. We look for happiness in the form of another woman. We look for stability in life through another man. We try to resolve conflict through violence. Or we try to solve material desires by stealing. Jesus understood these trials, these temptations, and so he prayed, Holy Father, protect them from the world so they may be one as we are one. That brings to mind the experience I heard of many years ago when a preacher needed that protection. It was actually his day off, but it didn't turn out that way. His wife had to work, and he had to go to Jackson, Tennessee for a conference meeting for the church. All attempts at finding a babysitter failed, and so it meant that his daughter, Hannah, had to go along for the ride and sit in on the meeting. Already a little stressed out, he thought that he could handle it okay. So they took off to Jackson, and they were running a little late, and so he was pushing it. And in there, an 18-wheeler pulls right out in front of him, and he had to go around it to keep from hitting it. And then he heard some noise, and he looked in the back seat. No, it wasn't him. It was a police car with the siren and the blue lights. <coughs> So he pulled over for the police officer. And the officer wanted to let him know that he had not properly navigated around the truck. Well, he wanted to explain to the police officer all that he knew, but he thought maybe he better just keep his mouth shut. And so he did. And when the cop handed him the ticket, he said, I want you to understand that I'm doing this for your own protection. 
He told him he understood and thanked him and got in the car. Well, Hannah had managed to get out of her car seat to look at the blue out lights and to listen to the commotion that was going on. So as he was trying to get her back into the car seat, the seat belt became tangled and was all knotted. And he gave a big yank on the seat belt and the knot came out and his head slipped off and he had hammered right in the mouth. Well now she's crying. He's trying to settle her down. He's, he said he didn't know what he was saying but he was whispering something to her. <coughs> they, he finally got her settled down and got back in the car and they finally did make it to the meeting. And when they walked in and they sat down, well their district superintendent looks at Hannah and says, what in the world happened to your lip? And Hannah says in a real loud voice and loud that everyone in the room could hear, Daddy hit me in front of a policeman. Days off are almost always an adventure. The officer reminded me of the protection that is all around us. Policemen guard our communities. The laws and rules protect our society. Parents teach us honesty and integrity. So they will their children so that they will grow up to a, uphold decent norms of behavior. We all need someone to keep us safe. Some of us even need protection from our own fathers. So why should it surprise us that our souls need safeguarding from corruption of the world? Jesus prayed for his disciples that the Father would protect them and keep them from losing their way in the world. Jesus knew only if God protected them would they be able to discover the ultimate meaning of life. We need a safe environment. And I don't think that means merely a safe physical and social environments, but also a safe spiritual environment to nurture our commitment to God. Jesus understood how difficult it was going to be for us to understand the meaning of our life. It's difficult because there are so many ways to get lost in the world. But the way is very open because God is here to protect us, to give our souls the security that we need in order to hear his call and to follow him. And this brings us to the second part of his prayer, in order that we might understand the meaning of life. He prays that we might know God Moses, when he brought the Ten Commandments down from Mount Sinai, he gathered all Israel together and read the commandments before the people. And then he summed up the Ten Commandments in these words. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. When Jesus was asked by an expert in the law, what is the greatest commandment in all the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And on the evening before his crucifixion, Jesus prays. He prays that the disciples will come to know God in a very personal way. Actually, Jesus is simply echoing those words of Moses. 
he is restating the lines in a brief phrase that they may know you, the only true God. Jesus isn't talking about knowing God like you know your ABCs. Let's not kid ourselves. Gentlemen, when your wife tells you she wants to know you better, she doesn't mean your shoe size. She's talking about an intimacy. She wants to know you personally. And that's what Jesus is praying for. And I want to tell you how hard this is. It's hard enough to let our family in the door of our hearts, let alone God. And yet, that is what is being asked of you. I tell you this is the only way to find meaning in life. And it's the only way that your children and grandchildren will find meaning in their lives. When Moses read all of Israel, the Ten Commandments, and summed them up by saying, Love God with all your heart. He added something very important. He said, Teach these commandments to your children. Teach these commandments to your children. Of course, the best way to teach your children the meaning of life is to live it. Live it yourself in the home. If your kids see you putting other things ahead of God, they will become discouraged and disillusioned. Like a young Jewish boy who once lived in Germany. His father was a very successful merchant, and the family practiced their Jewish faith. But then one day, they moved to another German city, and the boy's father announced that they would no longer attend synagogue. They were going to join the Lutheran church. The boy was very surprised and asked his father why the family was joining the Lutheran church instead of going to the synagogue. His father answered with something like this, for business reasons. There are so many Lutherans in this town that I can make a lot of good business contacts at the Lutheran church. It will be good for business. That boy who had a deep interest in religion became so disillusioned with his father that something died within him. He said to himself, my father has no real convictions. The incident helped to turn against religion with a vengeance. The young boy later moved to England and began to write. His name was Karl Marx. As the father of communism, he wrote the Communist Manifesto, in which he called religion the opiate of the masses. In other words, he believed that religion pacified people and made them ineffective in the world. It was a destroyer of progress. You know, I I just wonder if world history would have been different had Karl Marx's father come to know God as Jesus had prayed for his disciples to know God. One thing is sure, he needed to learn that from his father, and he did not. Your kids know whether you love God with all your heart. What they want to see is parents and grandparents and great-grandparents with such love and reverence for God that they bring Him into every area of their lives. 
and put him first in everything. Kids want to see whether their parents love God enough to obey Him. God gives us protection. He desires that we have a personal relationship with Him. And I'm not speaking primarily to the lost this morning. You know, I'm talking to the Christian community too. Remember that Jesus' prayer was for His disciples. Those who had already walked with Him for three years. We have a need to deepen our relationship with God. Jesus prays that we might do so. Will you pray that you might come to know God more deeply so that you can be one even as Jesus and the Father are one? Hear ye, the Lord our God is one Lord, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your life. How is your relationship with God today? Let us pray. Father God, we pray that each one here and each one watching this will come to you and get to know you better, more fuller, more deeper. Father, we pray for understanding we pray for thy Holy Spirit to guide us. We pray that we will be able to live up to and be worthy of being called a Christian. Father, we ask you to bless each one here and bless us as we leave this place. Be with us until we come again in thy presence. For it is in Christ's holy work and holy name that we do pray. Amen.